Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, it's been six months since Intel released their eighth gen core series, so we're probably ready to move on to a new series that'll use the same socket, but it won't be backwards compatible. Actually, no wait, that is wrong. Today, we're finally testing out some budget motherboards for existing eighth gen core series processors. Budget motherboards that don't support any kind of overclocking, and nevertheless, we're super excited to test them out because we've been waiting for these for what seems like forever. Just quickly, for those of you who are subscribed to the channel and have been missing some of our content, YouTube recently changed the way things work and some people had the little bell thing, the little bell notification deselected. So if you are subscribed and you wanna be notified of new content when it becomes available, hit the bell and that should put you in for the chance. Fingers crossed anyway. That said, thanks for watching and supporting our work. Now it's time to get back to the topic at hand. Normally when Intel, or AMD for that matter, release a new mainstream desktop processor series, they do so with a slew of new chipsets. For example, the 7th gen core series, codenamed KB Lake, hit the ground running with five supporting chipsets and three of them you're probably quite familiar with. As another example, AMD also released Ryzen with three desktop chipsets, the A320, B350 and X370. But when Intel raced out the 8th gen core series, codenamed Coffee Lake last year, they did so with just a single chipset, the high-end expensive Z370 version. This meant up until today, the cheapest Intel 300 series motherboard you could get your hands on cost around $110 US. Now, today, some six months since the initial release, Intel's finally ready to unleash their more budget-friendly chipsets, which includes the B360. I also have some H370 boards on hand, but we're focusing on the slightly more affordable B360 boards today. So, when compared to the Z370 boards we already have, what's missing from these cheaper B360 boards? Well, for starters, B360 boards don't support CPU or memory overclocking, even with an unlocked K processor. This means auto overclocking features such as multi-core enhancement don't exist either. They also don't support RAID configurations. They offer fewer PCIe lanes to the CPU, less USB ports, though the B360 chipset does introduce native USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, something the Z370 chipset lacks entirely. Then finally, whereas the Z370 boards can support up to three M.2 ports, the B360 boards are limited to a single port. As I noted earlier, the B360 chipset doesn't support DDR4 memory overclocking and as such is limited to the maximum frequency supported by the integrated memory controller. This means the Core i7 and Core i5 models can run it up to DDR4-2666 while the Core i3 models are limited to DDR4-2400. B360 boards do support XMP, but if you were to use modules with a DDR4-3000 profile, for example, then when you loaded that profile, it would only load the timings associated with that profile and then set the memory to 2666 or 2400, depending on the CPU used. MSI has kindly provided us with two of their new B360 models for testing, and they say that through their own internal testing, they've seen no difference in performance between B360 and Z370 motherboards when testing under the same conditions, of course. They are basing this claim on testing done with their most high-end model, the Gaming Pro Carbon, using the Core i7-8700K. I personally, though, was interested in testing more affordable models, so I requested the B360 Gaming Plus and the dinky little B360M Pro VD, which forgoes VRM cooling entirely. Now, if you missed my last video where I looked into the Core i7-8700's performance using the Intel Box Cooler, it might be worth going back and watching that video first. I'll provide a link in the video description. But in short, leading up to the release of these budget 300 series chipsets, there were concerns that the six core parts wouldn't be able to deliver the same level of performance on these more affordable motherboards when compared to what we were seeing on the Z370 models. MSI though is confident this isn't the case with their most premium model, the Gaming Pro Carbon, a 210 Australian dollar motherboard. But what about the more affordable $175 B360 Gaming Plus? That's $175 Aussie for those wondering. Well, let's take a look by comparing this new B360 motherboard to the MSI Z370 Godlike using the Core i7-8700 and Core i5-8400. And for those of you unaware, the Godlike is an $800 AUD motherboard. Right, so first up, here's a look at the memory bandwidth performance. And as you can see, all test configurations were able to use DDR4 2666 memory as we're testing Core i5 and Core i7 processors here. 
Of course, the Z370 board can utilize higher spec memory with these processors, but let's not worry about that for now. As you can see, the memory bandwidth is exactly the same using either the Z370 or B360 board. Moving on, here are the Cinebench R15 multi-threaded scores, and starting with the Core i5-8400, we see that it delivers the same score on both boards using the box cooler, and also note this CPU is no faster using an aftermarket cooler. Though I should also note that this is when testing in a room with an ambient air temperature of 21 degrees. It's a different story though with the Core i7-8700. Using the box cooler, we see the same performance on both the B360 and Z370 boards. However, if we install a tower style cooler, the score is increased by 5% as 8700 goes from an all-core turbo frequency of 4.1 GHz to 4.3 GHz. And this is because thermal throttling is no longer an issue. This performance uplift is being demonstrated on the B360 board, but it's the exact same story when testing with the Z370 model. Using the Corona benchmark, we see similar performance with both the 8400 and 8700 using either chipset. Again, it's the same story when testing with Povray, and here we see with a better cooler, the render time was reduced by a 2% margin with the Core i7-8700. More of the same is seen when testing with Blender, so I'm gonna wrap up the application testing here and check out a few games. Here we see when playing Battlefield 1 that the experience is the same on the B360 board as it is on the Z370. Please note we are looking exclusively at the 1% low frame time performance, which has been converted to an FPS metric. Similar results were found when testing with Far Cry 5. The difference between the two motherboards can be chalked up to the margin of error. This though is an interesting result. The feature-rich Z370 Godlike is significantly more power-hungry than the B360 Gaming Plus. Total system consumption for the Core i5-8400 was reduced by 25% with the B360 board, while the 8700 saw a 13% reduction in consumption. So it seems these cheaper motherboards are going to help improve the performance per watt rating of these locked Intel 6-core CPUs. Okay, so the MSI B360 Gaming Plus had no trouble matching an extreme Z370 motherboard with locked Coffee Lake CPUs. Of course, both boards were limited to DDR4-2666 memory. Naturally, the Z370 board will pull away in certain workloads and games when paired with higher frequency memory, and well, that's really a given. As I said earlier though, MSI suggests that the B360 Gaming Plus will retail for $175 Australian, and that places it just below the cheapest Z370 boards on the market. As an example, MSI's own Z370 Gaming Plus costs just $200, and for the price of a cheap meal, you get quite a few extras, not least of which is CPU and memory overclocking. So ideally, B360 shoppers will want to spend less. I have to admit though, I might have overachieved here as I convinced MSI to hand over their B360M Pro VD, which they say will come in at $115 Australian. Though that is the suggested price and it will likely cost less than that. At least I really hope it will. Right now for the same money, you can get the MSI B250M Mortar and that's a significantly higher quality motherboard. So realistically, I'm thinking more like 80 to 90 Australian dollars and probably 60 to 70 dollars US. We'll just have to wait and see though where pricing heads over the next few weeks. Anyway, what I can tell you is that the B360M Pro VD is a super, super basic motherboard and is the most affordable model MSI will be offering in the B360 range. Besides the basic chipset features, nothing extra has been added to this tiny micro ATX board. There's just two DIMM slots, no VRM cooling of any kind, and no HDMI or DisplayPort connectivity. There are none of those natively supported USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports included, just the six Gen 1 ports along with half a dozen USB 2.0 ports. MSI has though included an M.2 port, which is kind of nice, though I'm not sure how many users seeking an ultra affordable B360 board will be using M.2 storage, but it's there if needed. Now, the VRM is the most concerning aspect of this board, I have to admit, but before I get too carried away, I do realize there aren't too many if any of you watching that plan on sticking a $300 US Core i7 processor on what's very likely a sub $100 US motherboard. The B360M Pro VD is more of your Core i3-8100 type motherboard, maybe a Core i5-8400, but probably not a Core i7-8700. Still, I wanted to see how the 8700 got on, so this is what I started with. Loading up the Intel XTU software, we can already see that, like the ASRock Dex Mini I looked at in my previous video, the MSI B360 Pro VD has been downgraded to a 65 watt maximum turbo boost power draw with a maximum short power draw of 82 watts. 
In comparison, the B360 Gaming Plus was configured for 95 watts and 119 watts for the max boost. So this means we are seeing a 31% downgrade in power delivery, and this is no doubt going to impact the Core i7-8700, though based on what we saw with the Desk Mini, it probably shouldn't hurt the Core i5-8400. Firing up Cinebench R15, the 8700 scored just 1,211 points, but ignoring that first run and taking the average from four more runs resulted in a score of just 1,160 points. Please note for these tests I am using the Deepcool Gamax 200T. We know what the deal is with the crappy Intel box cooler, so let's just remove thermal throttling variable from these results. So that means the score is 16% down on what we saw with the MSI B360 Gaming Plus. So let's adjust the turbo boost parameters in the XTU software to match what we saw from the B360 Gaming Plus and run Cinebench R15 four more times. The B360 Pro VD is now allowing for a score of over 1,350 points, and that's within the ballpark of what we were getting with the Gaming Plus. Not quite as good, but at just under 2%, we'll call that margin of error. We could increase the turbo boost settings in the X2U software further, but a long run stress test reveals why that's only beneficial for short benchmarks. Here we have a complex blender workload and just 30 seconds in, we run into a bit of a hiccup. Everything looks great for the first 30 seconds. The 8700 holds 4.3 gigahertz on all six cores and we're ripping through the workload without a problem. Then like that, the motherboard winds the 8700 back down to the base clock of 3.2 gigahertz for seven seconds before cranking it back up to 4.3 gigahertz for eight seconds and then repeating the process over and over and over again. The reason this is happening is because the motherboard's VRM is overheating, or at least reaching the thermal limit. It then backs off the power delivery of the Core i7-8700, lets the VRM cool down over about a seven second period, and then ramps power delivery back up until the thermal limit of the VRM is reached once again, which as I said, takes about eight seconds. Without sticking some kind of heatsink on the MOSFETs, it's just not possible to avoid this throttling issue with the Core i7-8700. Of course, MSI probably aren't expecting too many people to pair this processor with their cheapest B360 motherboard, and even if you do, it still works without an issue, it's just slower than a board with ample cooling. But what about a high-end CPU you're more likely to pair with a budget board, something like a Core i5-8400? Without making any alterations to the B360 Pro VD's configuration, the Core i5-8400 scores 877 points on its fourth pass, which is on par with what we saw from the Z370 Godlike. That's great news, but what about the long run test? Well, I think it's time to fire up Blender once again. With the 65 watt package TDP ceiling, the 8400 left us with room to spare, every now and then peaking at just 62 watts. For the entire test, which ran for over an hour, the 8400 held a constant 3.8 gigahertz without flinching for a second. The Gamax 200T kept the CPU very cool at under 60 degrees, and we never saw any kind of throttling. That said, you won't see throttling with the Intel box cooler either on the 8400. As I found with the ASRock Desk Mini, the maximum package TDP of 65 watts is sufficient for getting the most out of the Core i5-8400, and this is why the box cooler has no issue avoiding thermal throttling with this CPU. This means ultra-budget boards like the MSI B360 Pro VD are perfect for use with locked Core i5 processors such as the 8400, and while it does work perfectly fine with the Core i7-8700, as in it's perfectly safe and perfectly stable, without upgrading the cooling you can expect to receive, or expect to see, up to a 20% performance hit, so bear that in mind. Of course, at this point we only tested a single cheap B360 board, and I'll update you as more boards come in. For now though, it's safe to say anyone wanting to build a Core i5-8400 rig on the cheap can do so with something like the MSI B360 Pro VD, though we strongly suggest you consider something a little more upmarket like the B360 Gaming Plus if you're serious about your computing. And that's going to do it for this one. Actually, just quickly, if you want to check out a review on the MSI B360 Carbon Pro, then head over to Jared's Tech. He's a fellow Aussie that does great work. I'll provide a link in the video description. Also, the Yes Man, he checked out the super cheap ASUS B360 model. So if you're interested in that, check it out. And again, I'll provide the link in the video description. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe for more content. If you appreciate the work we do here at Harbour Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.